Pero guarden sus armas, pues. Guarden sus armas. No tenemos armas, mire, no tenemos armas. Three years ago tonight, 43 students from a rural teacher's college in southern Mexico disappeared after a confrontation with security forces. The case is still unsolved. Their disappearance is only the most high-profile instance of a deeper problem. According to government figures, more than 32,000 Mexicans are currently missing. And it's the search for the 43 that's compelled the relatives of these other missing people to take up their own searches, scouring the countryside for any remains they can find. Mario Vergara brings his dog with him whenever he ventures into the hills to find buried bodies. She's there to alert him to the presence of people and wild animals. But finding the graves is up to Vergara himself, with help from hunters and others who stumble on traces of the disappeared in the forest. Busco a mi hermano, a mi hermano Tomás. A él lo secuestraron el 5 de julio del 2012. In the last three years, he's found dozens of bodies, and although none of them were his brothers, the search has become an end in itself. He caminado desiertos, he caminado bosques, he caminado canales de aguas negras, y te puedo asegurar que en cualquier parte del país puede haber una persona desaparecida enterrada. Like the vast majority in his position, Vergara doesn't know who took his brother. Only that kidnappings of everyday people are frequent, and nobody ever gets caught. We followed Vergara to an abandoned campsite where he believes kidnappers had held a group of hostages. Esta es la funda de una pistola. Hemos encontrado más de 170 cuerpos enteros enterrados en los cerros. Y con frecuencia los encuentran cerca de campamentos como este. Sí. Vergara is one in a loose movement of buscadores, or searchers, which originated here in the southern state of Guerrero in 2014, after 43 students disappeared in the small city of Iguala. The search for the students' remains, though fruitless, turned up hundreds of other bodies in the hills, inspiring people like Vergara to search for their own loved ones. Yo no lo busqué por miedo. Nunca lo busqué hasta que pasó la desaparición de los 43 estudiantes en Iguala. The case of the 43 missing students blew the cover off of the epidemic of forced disappearances in Mexico. Now, three years later, the NGO that represents their families in court has commissioned a full reconstruction of events from an agency called Forensic Architecture, which pulls together, for the first time, every known fact about the case. The students came from a school with a tradition of radical left-wing activism. And on the night they disappeared, they were in buses they had commandeered to drive to a protest in the capital. As they tried to leave Iguala, they were ambushed simultaneously in two different locations by security forces, all the way from the local to the federal, acting in concert with organized crime. The exact motive for the attacks remains unclear, though the reigning theory is that one of the buses, unbeknownst to the students, was loaded with drugs or cash, and that corrupt officials brought the full force of the state down to stop them from taking it. But that's not what the government says. According to the Mexican Attorney General, which is prosecuting the case, the attacks were an act of petty retaliation for the students' political activities, and only a small number of local officials were involved. Investigative journalist Anabel Hernández covered the case from the beginning for the magazine Proceso and also published a book about the 43. Así que lo que puedo decir es que la versión oficial del gobierno de México sobre el caso de los 43 normalistas de principio a fin es absolutamente falsa. Esta negligencia del gobierno, este no resolver el caso, es porque el gobierno prefirió eh, no hacer justicia en este caso para encubrir a los verdaderos responsables. Estamos hablando de un crimen de Estado. Han salido a las calles para levantar la voz. Hernández views the disappearance of the 43 as just one symptom of a much larger problem. Untold numbers of government officials participate actively in organized crime. And in a country where the military and police have been deployed on a massive scale, ostensibly to fight the cartels, this means thousands of heavily armed men who can kill with impunity. Para que la gente se dé una idea, el 98% de los crímenes en México no se resuelven. 
Al gobierno no le importan los desaparecidos. Porque ¿cómo puede ser posible que al gobierno no le importen los desaparecidos de su, propio, de su propia población? Yo tengo la hipótesis de que porque en la gran mayoría de las desapariciones hay al menos un agente del gobierno involucrado. The Mexican Attorney General's office did not respond to any of our questions. We did, however, speak with a spokesman from the Guerrero state government who agreed to discuss the larger question of forced disappearances and who acknowledged that government corruption is partly to blame. Desde la desaparición de los 43, se han encontrado cientos de cadáveres en fosas clandestinas en los cerros de Guerrero. ¿Eso cómo se explica? El principal problema se llama impunidad, que se va a acabar si acabamos con la corrupción y logramos consolidar un sistema de justicia penal que sea sólido, fuerte, y haya corporaciones policíacas fuertes. ¿Ha habido alguna sentencia por desaparición forzada en el estado de Guerrero? No conozco si existen. Es un dato que yo te la debo. The answer is no. According to a report by the Mexican Commission on Human Rights, there were no such sentences in Guerrero before 2015. And the governor's office was unable to provide examples of any since then. That leaves Mario Vergara and searchers like him alone to recover the missing. It's a risky endeavor. Vergara and his family receive threats on a regular basis. In this country, it's más fácil encontrar la muerte que encontrar justicia. Vergara took us to a place in the hills where a worker mending a barbed wire fence found a human foot. Este es otro, otro hueso más grande. Y si tú rompes el calcetín, vas a encontrar los huesos más chicos. Estos son de personas. As Vergara prepared to dig to make sure the rest of the body was there, he heard a car pulling up the hill from the highway. Déjame ver, ¿no? Espérame tantito. But it was a false alarm. Si este carro que vino hubiera sido gente mala, aquí nos matan. Aquí nos desaparecen, hubiéramos terminado tal vez enterrados por ahí. After a few minutes of careful digging, he found a shin bone sticking out of the second shoe. And the rest followed. Mira, 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 aquí está la clavícula. ¿Ya viste? Entonces este lo han de ver enterrado así. La cabeza va a estar como para acá, como que lo doblaron. Esta es una falange. Este es un metacarpo. Pensé que aquí hay una persona. De momento se ve una, no sabemos cuántas hay. Los muertos me molestan, no me dejan dormir. 